speaking about gas, um, so Doctor, no, no, pardon me to uh, button on this one, but yes, you did give some analogy about how you talked about the gas company, how Gazprom functions going to look for their own investment. But again, in relation to the PIB, if the gas company as they function, a public utility uh, institution, how are they going to go on and operate as you suggested Gazprom does, if I understood you properly, without some amendments with the PIB? The the existing petroleum in, petroleum act has enough room to enable it function. You don't need PIB for it to exist. The petroleum act has only has the petroleum act in existence has even gave room to the establishment of the Nigerian Gas Company, and if this becomes a more robust group from what uh, uh, the Petroleum Minister, Minister of State is talking about. We are talking about giving him more teeth to bite, giving him more responsibility. Let me, let me, let me t break it down a, a, a little bit for us to, to understand it. Today we have Nigerian Gas Company. What have they been doing was more like gas trading. When we talk about gas processing, for us to process gas in Nigeria and so that we can get all the various versions from, of gas, LPGs and coals, CNGs, just name it. This processing, the, 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 the most functional ones that we'll see today are being done by private sectors. So, but within the government sections, there is a division that has a GM in NMPC for gas processing. And you ask yourself a question. That, that division that has a GM, how many gas processing plants have they been able to establish? Establish. So, and you have another section that has also a GM that has gas infrastructure. And you ask yourself again, since the gas master plans was developed, what has this gas infrastructure division been able to deploy? Able to deploy. And if you pull these two, because I'm using this as an example, if you pull these two and they become part of the responsibilities of Nigerian gas company, it tells you one, they will not only trade on gas, they will do the gas gathering, they will do the gas processing, they will be the one to make the infrastructures either for domestic consumption or for exports. So that full responsibility is because, that. so any investors that they are talking to, that they are dealing with, will, will typically understand that, yes, I'm dealing with a one-stop shop. You know, if this pulls through, uh, do you think we'll, we will still be needing the PIB? There are a couple of ways to look at it. I said that for every, for every law in a country, uh, there is the, the core legal aspect and there is the administrative act. This does not in any way circumvent the... The, the, the PIB. It does not in any way circumvent the PIB. But it will go further to really make a case whether we need that PIB as a whole document or we need it in accordance to these divisions. You can decide to have petroleum upstream industry bill, petroleum downstream industry bill, Petroleum midstream industry bill. Bill. And if you're dealing with the upstream bill, the committee on upstream will be the only committee to sit on it and finalize on it. And that will accelerate this. You know, uh, because if once, once we have it as this whole document, let's say the upstream sections has cleared all they need to clear within the bills and the midstreams still have issues, the bill cannot fly. 
Hmm. Cannot you know, fly. And even when the midstream clears their own parts and the downstreams have not cleared their own parts, the beer will still be hanging. And maybe before the downstream will finish clearing their parts, there are new development in upstreams that will call for revisits. They will come back again. So we have gone through these cycles. All right, now... So how? Breaking, it, breaking it down and... Yeah, let, let me, let me this jump in there and factor this in. This actually to us to review... Eh? Uh, how, uh, still have one more, not too clear about some of your explanation about how you want uh, the private enterprise approach to uh, gas, because as it is now, it's a regulated area, wherein the prices are fixed by government in terms of gas pricing. But it's the same way that you have some multinationals that say, look, they cannot come and invest in this country because... Is a regulated industry. And they think until government completely hands off, let market forces determine what happens, they can't invest. So can the gas company get a private sector approach with those seeming encumbrances? No, the, no, the de definitely uh, I would not see such a situation imagine itself in the day. We, we keep saying that the international company has encumbrances in, 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 in the investment. Uh, le, le, let me give you some, a typical example. Shell or Chevron. These are companies that has a JV with Nigerian government. And most of these JVs are 60-40 or 55-45. So the, the Nigerian government has the majority. And from a simple business understanding, you will know that he that has a majority equity in a JV determines what to do as far as he can back his decision with cash. Most of these developments that have been called upon uh, did not see the fruition of the day because of the, the inability of the government to come up with the cash support with the cash support requires as majority equity holder. So that, that is a different case. Then when it comes to gas pricing, that we, when it comes to gas pricing, uh, there is an established domestic price and there is an established international price. Who is International price. So these two... Eh? Established domestic and international price. Who, who established that? Yes. The, 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 the international price is globally determined by the market forces. What about the, the domestic price is determined by in-country, in-country to encourage their development. Because the Nigerian government is majority, they can decide to say this volume of gas will go for domestic consumption, and because we want to industrialize, we want to reduce the price. But for the, for the export one, it is an established international price. So when it comes to the issue of pricing, it really, really has nothing. But there is one important thing I need to mention to you. Remember, the gas production is not like crude oil productions. Crude oil productions, where you can produce it and store it and determine who wants to buy or who you want to sell it to and when you want to sell it to. Gas production, before you commence your production from a natural gas feed, you must have an assigned receivers, signed receivers. Who has that responsibility to, to be the off-taker? Yeah, but Dr. Naji, if we're going to go ahead with this policy, I mean, you say the local component is that those prices are fixed here by government. And so while the international one is determined by international forces, market forces, isn't that, why, isn't that why we always hear them tell us here that, look, it's not profitable here because we prefer to sell them internationally where we make more money. So if we keep fixing the prices here, how do they do business to the extent that the gas companies can then begin to function with the model that you're painting? Okay, I understand this. 
the, the, the survivor and the sustenance of the nation is more paramount than the profit to make from any transactions. Make from any transactions. If we, if we have a JV where I own 45% and you own, uh, no, I own 65% and you own 45%. So for whichever reason that it goes, if I decide to take 20% of my gas productions for my own economic development, it's not, it's not an issue. That's, it's, the domestic consumption is not an issue. It's, it's not an issue at all. All right, uh, one more thing before you wrap up. At the end of the day, because he says there will be a group to be discussing with the National Assembly, interfacing with them, you have another group that will interface with policymakers. So if they find out and they put it to them that, listen, if this has got to be viable, you have to remove subsidy on all fronts, how do you think we should respond to that? Uh, the, I've, I've always been a different person when it comes to subsidies, though. In, if, you, if you recall in my, last, in my last discussions on China, I always say there's nothing wrong with subsidy, but when you subsidize individual lifestyles, there's something wrong with it. But when you subsidize the value chains of production, you are doing the right thing, and that is that. If subsidizing the price for gas, which will lead to industrialization for Nigeria, then we know we're on the right path. And it is not for you to just come up and say you want to subsidize it or come up that chain. It should be a full plan and you say, okay, I'm going to do 50% subsidy in the next five years. After that, I'll move down to 30% or 20% and I'll, till I grind it down to zero. And there are parameters to measure that whatever I'm subsidizing, it is having this economic effect. But when those parameters are not defined, you are bound to have challenges and issues. So that becomes a, a different thing, just like you'll be subsidizing for no defined benefit. All right, Dr. Nachi. That benefit. It, so that it, um, is not a very... It, it will be very interesting to see how that public debate, uh, which you suggested, turns out because... I mean, when this kind of topic comes out, you could expect a lot of passion from so many people on that. Well, thank you for talking to us this morning, Dr. Noah Nachi, energy economist. What well, time for us to flip over and have a look again at the headlines with Anne Wawado. <laughs>